see if that one's actually connected in. My brain is like. Okay, I'd like to call the Groveland Township regular board meeting for April 11th order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Hey, Janelle, could you uh, take roll call? Nicola? Yep. Yeah. Here. Yes. Bill? Yes. Christopher? Here. Ms. Riley? Yes. Okay, has everybody received a copy of today's agenda for April the 11th? And if so, are there any questions or comments on it to approve it? Looked pretty good to me. I didn't see anything we had to change. Now I need a motion to approve as submitted. A motion to approve the agenda as submitted. Is there a second to that? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, we're approved. <laughs> Next is approval of the minutes. We have uh, first on our Mar March the 9th meeting for the special meeting minutes. Anybody have any questions or comments on those minutes? If not, a motion to approve would be in order. The March 14th. No, March 9th. One. These were the special board. Did you have them? Did you run them? Uh, I March 14th. March I have the 14th. 14th. I don't have the ninth one. Sir, the March 9th was the um, special workshop for the, for the marijuana, marijuana ordinance. Yeah. And it basically just said that we, we had a workshop. <laughs> workshop. To go over, I thought I had put some in my packet here. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Basically, to um, do you want to set? I could go around oh. real quick. It basically just said to go through the draft. Um, Is that a workshop? We don't make any right. motions to approve right. it. it. Was just right. discussion on right. the issues right. that we talked right. about with the attorney and right. uh, the consultant. There they are. Go ahead. Let me make it for a copy. Okay. Okay. You want to wait? Where are they? Right. Well, the we just, where are they? Where were they? She has them in Jim's. Jim's. Oh. Special. <laughs> oh. Thank you, you know Janelle. What? It'll be faster for you guys to look at them. Okay. That, yeah. Oh, right. It's <laughs> nothing <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's nothing. Revisions and then adjourn. Yeah. I mean. I know. There's nothing on because there's no motions right. made at a meeting or workshop. Oh, yeah. There it is. Okay. okay. So, a motion. All right. I'm sorry, I forgot so, who made the motion. So the motion is to approve the March 9th um, special meeting, um, board meeting minutes on the marijuana ordinance workshop. Okay. The do you want the March 14th? Uh, let's, let's do the ninth One first one separate. Yeah. So you made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. By Teresa. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? They're approved. Okay, now we want to do the March 14th. Which is the regular board meeting. We want to make a motion on those. They looked okay to me. A motion to approve the March 14th um, regular meeting as submitted. Okay, is there a second to that? I'll, I'll second that. By Gina. Okay, any other questions or comments from the board? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, we're done with that. Next, we move into financials. First item, uh, Patty, is the budget amendments. Yeah. Um, nope. This yeah, is we're cool, right? Yes. We are at the end. Oh, yeah, we should have done them together. We oh, I'm sorry. The, the fire, fire board fire minutes. Yes, I apologize. Board. We need to do the fire board meeting for March 14th. Who wants to do that? I'll make a motion to approve or accept the regular meeting minutes for the fire board on March 14th. Okay. Is there a second? I'll support. Patty, okay. Any questions or comments? Not all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Now we're done with the minutes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Back to the finances. Yeah. Patty, I think so, there's no budget amendments this year. Yeah. Time. I have no budget amendments. It, uh, the March 31st is the end of the fiscal, fiscal year. year. Mm -hmm. April 1st is the beginning of the new year. 
So everything was good. Um, so my motion is to approve, or well, there are no budget amendments. So. Okay. We're next good. next item would be accounts payable, and you do have that, of course. Yep, Every accounts month. payable are, where did my uh -huh. sheet go? Thank you. <laughs> One um, general uh, accounts payable were $35,938. 32 cents, and that's for the general. Um, the building department was 325, and that's a refund to someone who did not go through well, with go their on. project. It doesn't go into an escrow, but just so everybody knows, um, when there's a refund like that, the admin fee is not refundable. So this is what was refundable to them. So the total for the month was $36,263.32. And the 206, the bills for the month were $3,533.71. Bravo to Kevin. <laughs> there. I, I don't think there's something we probably <laughs> <laughs> my thought is we're going to do bills tomorrow there's probably some of those nothing was due One bill, so. five yeah. sure. well it doesn't probably. matter the auditor ends up moving it later anyway right. <laughs> exactly at the end of the month so or during the audit uh so my um motion is to accept the accounts payables for township Building and fire as presented. Is there a second to that? I'll second it. Any questions or comments from the board? And Janelle, would you take a roll call? Back? Yes. Bill? Yes. Christopher? Yes. Mandelli? Yes. Devon? Yes. And then the revenue and expense report is not listed here. However, um, well, it is. Financial report. Yeah. It's the revenue expense. Again, it um, there's no budget amendments needed. Um, it's all took care of. Yeah. yeah, it looks good. So my motion is to approve the revenue and expense or the yeah, the revenue and expense report as submitted. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments on it? The money's actually already been approved, so all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we're rolling now. Investment report, Teresa? Um, well, you have there for the cash on hand as of March 31st in each of those funds, so. Um, Looks pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. Actually, the uh, interest rate went up at Oakland County's local government investment pool, so we're almost earning 1%. Whoa. Let's see, how does that set against a 7.8% monthly increase? <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the report, Teresa. Mm -hmm. uh, moving into presentations, we have two. The first one is on SISMA. And um, Erica, who I call Miss SISMA, <laughs> is here from the county to do a presentation for us on the SISMA program. And I said hi to you, Alicia, but you just didn't hear me when you walked in. <laughs> I'll stand over here so you okay. can see the slides and me. Um, so thanks for, thanks for having me present to you. Just wanted to kind of give an update on some, um, some of the invasive species things in Groveland. You're probably already aware of some of them and also give you the opportunity to ask me questions if you have any. So um, you can go ahead to the next one. Um, so just as a reminder, invasive species are not just you know, annoying plants or weeds or stuff that are not native to this area um, and whose introduction causes or is likely to cause harm. It can be any type of organism from a plant to an insect uh, or an animal or a fungus. So a picture here. Um, so invasives are a problem because they have few natural competitors. Generally, when they come over, they don't come with the things that would eat them in their native environment. And so they can unbalance ecosystems like you see uh, there with the vine growing over, all over everything. Um, and that's pretty typical of uh, what we see in areas that get invaded with species. 
Um, we also see a substantial damage to infrastructure. So here's a couple examples. This is Crash Landing somewhere on the left, coming up through a bridge and also through a roadway. Um, and over on the right, it's not weed, which you might not be as familiar with, but that's an even more destructive plant um, that can, it comes from an area of volcanic soil. So it can actually break through even like house foundations um, because it comes from an area where it's used to be run over by lava flows and then it just pops back up again. Um, <laughs> So sometimes we also cause safety of fire hazards. So this was a fire um, that started because of a gas line break. Um, it was near the Great Lakes Crossing Mall a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. Oh. Zed, track Mines, you may remember. Yeah. So they actually had to close the highway for a while and evacuate there because it burned so hot that they couldn't control it, essentially. So um, another example. And then also, uh, they can lower property values. So they've done scientific studies on this, and it shows that um, if something like Pragmites comes in, and you can no longer get to your lake uh, to do the recreation, boating, swimming, everything that you want to do, um, uh, that removing it then increases the property value. Um, and then in general, um, like I mentioned, they create what we call monoculture. So this person standing behind. Uh, an area of Phragmites that's, it's basically just Phragmites. So there's not, normally in a natural ecosystem, we would have a mix of different types of plants, but in this ecosystem, it's just that one type of plant. And there's really nothing that can live in that. So there's a few birds that might perch on the top of the stalks, but like turtles can't get through that. Um, like there's really not anything living in that environment. So it's not very good for our, you know, birds and pollinators and all our other things that we um, like to be able to be around. So. All right, so just as a reminder, SISMA, um, which Groveland Township is a member of, so we are a collaboration to support functioning ecosystems and enhance quality of life through ecosystem management. Um, we work with a lot of municipalities in Oakland County, as you see highlighted in that map there, so all of them in yellow. Um, we've received a lot of grant funding since our founding. Uh, we have a strategic plan, currently two uh, staff members and over 40 partners. So in addition to the municipalities, um, we also partner with, um, can you go ahead to the next one? And here, yeah, the county agencies like Parks and Recreation, uh, also Land Conservancies and other nonprofits like the Watershed Councils. And this is just a few statistics from our past years. We continue to do a lot of workshops and presentations. Um, we do a lot of surveys for invasive species, a lot of roads, trails, and parks. Um, we manage the treatment of invasive plants, um, and we do a lot of outreach via our website, Facebook, etc. And I did bring, I, I haven't seen any of them, just a few examples of um, some of oh. our materials. All right, I'll put those out on there. <laughs> okay, you did. Yeah, first in the front. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, all right. Boxes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, Okay, so in Groveland Township, um, this is really just a smattering of what's actually there because we haven't done a lot of specific surveys in Groveland, but some of this is based off of the county parks data. So you can see the colors correspond to different invasive species. So in pink is swallowwort, um, which is definitely a problem in this part um, of the county. And then green is Phragmites. Uh, the road right away segments, some of them are really small, so they're not showing up that well. Um, and then over on this side, you can see the orange dots are not weeds. So you can see that there's a, a good amount of that. And that's just because we've surveyed the road right away. So we've noticed that. So I'm sure there's more than that, but that's just what we um, could easily see. Um, so that's just an example of some of the things. This map doesn't show like things like woody invasive species. So like buckthorn or honeysuckle or um, you know bittersweet vine, uh, garlic mustard, things like that. So those yep. are also pretty common. Um, yeah, Eric, the just yeah. a question though, the, the state still doesn't do anything on their properties for them, do they? So it depends on the area. We are working with them. So they have a local person that, um, Kelsey Deeds is her name. She uh -huh. does all the workday events um, on the state properties. Um, so they make a decision whether or not they think exactly. it has enough. So they actually have them. really um, a complex management plan for each park area. So there's some areas of some parks that they manage intensively, and there's some areas of some parks that they don't manage very much. Okay. But she's the person, I would say that's the best person. That's usually who I ask if I'm wondering, like, so what's, you know, is, are you doing anything in this area or, you know. So if it was like by Heron Lake or something where mm -hmm. a lot of people use it, they probably do something that, that's kind of off into the woods. It's more. Well, and it's stable. actually not even always visibility. Sometimes it's just from the natural um, inventory of the oh, area. Okay. So they actually have done, had scientists out to look at it. And they know that like some areas, for example, have a lot of rare plants. So mm -hmm. they'll try to do more 
to protect those areas um, because our biggest bang for our buck is like not getting new species but also protecting the areas that are intact okay um, so yeah Thanks. but yeah if you ever want to ask about a certain area i can connect you um okay i'm sure she's happy to answer questions about that as well yeah that's a good question i know you have a lot of, a lot of property eight, eight, not, eight thousand acres <laughs> yeah <it's not> managed <laughs> by you <laughs> or by property owner. <laughs> Here, so. Okay, go ahead to the next one. Um, so just to review, I know you're familiar with some of these species. So Pragmite is a small uh, wetland grass and grow up to 20 feet tall, often in these monocultures. The reason it's hard to control is because of the rhizomes. Um, so there's actually more underneath the ground than there is above the ground, mm -hmm. which is why if you just cut it down, um, it's going to come back up. Um, and we work, we've been working with the Road Commission for Oakland County on the road right away Pragmite uh, because it often causes safety concerns like blocking the road view um, at intersections or flapping over the road. Um, in addition to uh, Rhagmites is a little farther along, but in many cases, some of these species started on the roadways and then they've actually spread to more properties. So the roadways are a major pathway of spread for invasives. So the more seeds and materials on those areas, the more likely it is they're going to spread into new areas. Um, so I mentioned this, so we've been doing, doing this since 2018, and it's been effective in reducing both the density and the linear feed, which is how we typically measure the Phragmites amount. Um, so we do see reductions in both of those. Most of the Phragmites um, is now down to uh, less patchy or sparse in most areas. Um, so that's good news. Um, uh, we are not requesting contributions, or we sometimes request communities to contribute to those treatments. We're not requesting that in, uh, in this year because we're using some of the new open uh, county parks and recreation millage funding to make up that remainder. But I know that you also put in a couple of projects for the millage funding separately. So it's just good to think long term, you know, we're trying to maximize all of our funding sources. So it's possible that we may ask for that contribution in the future because we're trying to make sure that we still have the funds available for those other projects as well. So. We need to figure out how to call it an ARPA project where. <laughs> 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 where they can actually come and dig out the yeah. rhizomes. <laughs> um, all righty. Um, and so, you know, on Phragmites or really any invasive species, you know, it's a multi year sequence. Um, you have to survey regularly. Ideally, you're managing just small patches. Um, combining the chemical treatment and mowing or cutting it down really helps. Um, so, that combination is really important. Um, and the roadway is a harsh environment, but we're, we are starting to talk about as well, thinking about, is there something we can do to try to seed uh, those areas to make it more resilient to future invasion? So we are we are thinking um, in that those directions. What are you well. thinking of seeding? Um, I don't have a specific um, one for you yet. I know that Sarah cook Malin, who is the Natural Resources Manager for Oakland County, they, they've created a number of lists of different species. I don't know if they have one right now specifically for roadway environments, as you can imagine, because it has to be like salt tolerant and other things, it's a little trickier than mm -hmm. some areas. Um, but I know that there are a lot of lists like that. And I know that the parks has tried it in some some places, like to have more, for example, native grasses, say, on the roadway, as opposed to like these big tall grasses. So it's definitely something that we've, um, you know, started talking about. And I think we're far enough along because we're seeing good, good results that especially in some areas, we can start to think about how are we going to restore those areas. Um, bring them back still to amazed by the people that take these and put them in their gardens for mm -hmm. a fact. It's they just kind of, uh, the they don't realize what they are yeah. and they use them as landscaping them access. Like them as streams. Yeah. yeah. And if you mow a lot, it might be okay, but if it's, you know, it's next to your pond or you're something gonna, else. You're going to end up with a big screen. You're going to keep going. And yeah. 20 feet out. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay, so knotweed. Is everyone familiar with knotweed at all? Mm -hmm. A bit too. Okay. Okay. All right. Do you do? Um, so as I mentioned, this is the one that can break through concrete. Even mm -hmm. it's not that it necessarily will like it's gonna go to the path of least resistance, but it also does not mind breaking through things because it's coming from an area where um, it can do that. So um, it's basically a perennial shrub, but it's also pretty tall. I didn't put the height on here, but it's definitely going to be 10 or 15 feet tall. Um, these are the flowers that you see in like August. Um, 
And then one of the main issues with it is right now, I would say knotweed is not as widespread as Phragmites in the county, but mm. it's going to become that way quickly because it's an even better spreader than Phragmites um, mm. because it can spread through cut segments. So um, actually go to the next slide if you would. So these segments, this is what it looks like when it comes up uh, in the spring and those little like where the red lines are, if any of those sections are broken off, that can start a new plant. So if you like oh, put wow. them all over it or like cut, you, you know, might actually them, spread it that way. Exactly. It'll <laughs> just like literally fall onto your grass or whatever and start up a new plant. Um, it also can float on water, uh, which is unfortunate. And so it will colonize uh, areas along rivers and streams. And then a flood event will happen and it will wash out. Um, it, it actually destabilizes stream banks, um, which is good for it because then it washes downstream and starts new infestations. Um, we've definitely seen this in like um, in the Beverly Hills area, for example, um, moving along the Rouge River in multiple spots. Um, so that's happening. This is what it looks like uh, right now if it hasn't started to come up the like dead stalks. Um, and those are actually dead. So those will not, unless they get around like that, either Phragmites or not, we those will not grow. They could be composted or disposed of. Um, but once they're green, uh, all of that, you know, if you cut it, it's not dead. It needs to dry out for a year. Otherwise, it'll just grow right back again. Wow. Um, so, go ahead and the next one. so, this is what like a typical infestation might look like. We're finding with the knotweed because we started doing knotweed grow right away treatments last year that that one right now seems to be, um, at least where it's on the roads, it's definitely on the roads, but spreading onto the properties rather than the other way around. For Phragmites, I think it's been there longer, so we're seeing more like larger infestations spreading onto the road. But this one is going the opposite direction, which is one reason we're trying to control it before, before that happens, um, if people have this on their properties. Um, and I think there's one more maybe picture. So this is just to show you, this is a building in Farmington Hills. Um, it's literally coming up like right through slash next to the wall and foundation of this. So this is not an abstract concept. It really is happening in some areas. So want to keep an eye out for it for sure. And then finally, swallowwort. Um, so this is a vine, um, has very tiny flowers. Um, it'll start blooming pretty soon, like here. Um, and then the really thing with swallowwort is it makes these seed pods. They kind of look like mini milkweed pods, but they pop open and the seeds are windblown. So it's really difficult to control because even if you were doing everything on your side, it's just going to blow onto the other side. So this is, as you're probably aware, problem in kind of this whole um, corner of the county. Um, so, and especially because it's toxic to livestock as well. So it can oh. ruin hay fields because oh. if you have it in there, you literally can't harvest it because it could harm what you need. Like they cover all different areas. Uh, yeah. For small yeah. Maybe that one's from the But typically they're from somewhere else. So unfortunately in our interconnected world, right? We move all these things around. Some of them we moved on purpose and some of them were accidental. Um, yeah. Go ahead to the next one. Um, okay, so just in general, this is we talk about this curve a lot because it's showing you like the cost of control um, over time. And basically, we know that the cheapest thing to do is to prevent something from ever getting to an area. You can't do that. We try to eradicate it. That's what Sigma we spend a lot of time on, the newer species. Um, and then when it gets to those later stages, we just have to manage it long term. So uh, there have been various estimates done, but one is that the Great Lakes is already spending $100 million annually mm -hmm. on invasive species, and that's probably an underestimate. Mm -hmm. um, and we know there's more species coming in, so it's just a matter of we can't keep adding them on. We have to manage the ones that we have. Um, and there's not, you know, without our human intervention, uh, they're going to keep spreading and moving around. So we, well, we are spreading them partially, but also we have to intervene and stop that process. Um, otherwise, more is going to keep um, coming in that way. Um, okay, and then I just want to include this one in here as well. So thinking about restoration, um, you know, we always want to think about what's our long-term plan. Um, as they say, nature abhors a vacuum. So if we get rid of a whole bunch of Phragmites or knotweed or something else that's been there for a long time, then there's nothing there that's not going to stay that way. So you're going to get something else. So you want to think about, um, you know, what can we feed or plant in there? Um, 
what can we do with our uh, species like in our yards? Unfortunately, a lot of invasives are planted. Um, I asked and then later escaped to natural areas. Um, Babies birth. Yeah, yeah, that's a really bad one on that other side of the state. Yeah, so there's really good resources out there for like what, you know, this one is really nice because it's like, if you like the look of honeysuckle, instead plant this plant. Um, so there's a lot of good resources. Um, and I know I brought some brochures and we've got lots of videos on YouTube and um, that kind of thing. So um, feel free to, oh, I think the last one. So I just want to remind you that, you know, all this is available to you as a member in SISMA. So don't hesitate to um, reach out in terms of help with any of these things. So we've done surveys, for example, of parks and other areas in addition to our main road right away ones. Um, uh, just as a few examples, um, we provide training, we present it to HOAs or other groups, um, uh, there's involvement in grants. Um, you know, if people want it, we come up with new brochures. So, you know, please tell us what it is that would be helpful for you because we want to be providing um, the service that we can to you and to your community. So. I do have a question yeah. on in that vein. Yeah. How do you control the people that you hire that go out to uh, use chemical, you know, chemical methods to uh, beat back the frag mites? I know when I first spoke with you a few years ago, we talked about the drop, the drip method, mm -hmm. and that's not what I see happening. They jump out of the truck, they do this with their spray wand. Glyphosate follows the water table. Not a good thing. Um, in, in the human biome or in nature in, in general. Um, but how do, how do you manage them from doing that? I'm sure that's not the directive that they have been given. So the management techniques that are used depend on the um, environment that you're in. So if we're in a really sensitive environment, we would use the technique that you're talking about where we would cut individual stalks and treat them. Mm -hmm. um, road right -aways are generally not, there's generally not a lot of like native species or other species. Um, there that we're as concerned about. Um, so yes, our contractors are using a, it's not a broadcast spray in the sense of like, you know, like it's still a either, well, it's still, I think pretty much always a handheld sprayer, it is. Um, but it's not, they're not cutting and treating individual stocks. Um, so we do set aside in our contracts when we make that with them, the method of how they're applying. Um, but typically for roadsides, they're all, they are spraying. Um, yeah. And again, into water that ends up in our wells. So all of the, all of the herbicides that we're using are aquatic approved, which means, um, that they are approved for use in specific the environments use. that they're being used. Under specific guidance use, not mm -hmm. just blanket spray. Uh, all our contractors okay. are following, like the okay. labels are the law in terms of those. Right. They are following what it says on the label. Um, I, I have a video that says otherwise, and I that's it's from like three years ago because I have tried to converse with you over this via email and and it's not um, again it's a problem. And well, I'm so happy to discuss minus. it with you yeah. again. Um, um, Parks and Recreation actually has a fact sheet which I didn't bring tonight, but about glyphosate specifically. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need lessons on it. I understand it completely. Okay. I've worked with it. It's not no. It, it I don't want it in my water. Okay. I'm happy to just you know if you have other questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I've I've never not responded to any right. messages. No, that no. Have sent me, so yeah. No, um, you. That's true. That's very true. Dean. But I just yeah. For me to see what's going on is not what I would expect. Um, so that's not the approved method of use. I, I respectfully yeah. disagree, okay. but yeah. I understand yeah. what you're yeah. saying. Okay. What, Thank what you, chemicals? Andrew. What chemicals do they use? It depends on the plant or what's being treated. Um, so typically for roadsides, they are using glyphosate, and the reason for that is it's not as persistent in the soil as other herbicides that could be used on Phragmites might be. So persistence has to do with how long it will stay in the soil after it's applied. So glyphosate does not stay for a long time. It is metabolized by uh, organisms in the soil. Um, there's other herbicides that could be used, um, but they are more persistent, which means sometimes, depending on the environment, they can impact trees and other species that we were not intending um, to use. So generally, we're the most conservative, and we use the most conservative herbicide that we can that will achieve the result that we're going for. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Thank you, Erica. I answered several questions for me that I had. Are there any others? I have one. So we can, if we have a resident that calls and wants information, we're we're free to give them your number here. Yep. Okay, great. Yep, I go out, uh, well, yeah, I talk to people and I provide them brochures over email or they send me pictures. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have two presentations tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Melissa is going to give us an update kind of on what the plans are for the ORV park because, you know, we've kind of uh, proved what they're doing now and they're into their own thing with the changes that they'll be making. And I asked at some point in time if she could kind of give us an update on what's happening with the park. And that's why she's here today. Yeah, it's been a minute. So, so yeah, the timing is good. This is actually the same presentation that I gave to our first mm -hmm. recreation cushion last month. So um, some of the information might be less interesting to you and I'll flip through those slides a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know you guys are very familiar with this, but we just kind of like to remind people of, you know, the basic stats of the park, which is that we opened in 2020, um, which means that last year was actually our first full year oh, yeah. of operation. Um, it seems like it's been much longer than that, but it was really just our first full year. Um, the property is owned by the DNR, which we operate in partnership with them. Uh, we have a 20-year operating agreement. Um, a big part of that agreement that is important to our commission is that we share in our operating losses with the DNR at the park, and I'll talk on another slide. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the goal is for the park to be revenue positive and bring money in to support itself, um, but if and when we, we lose money at the end of the year, we share that cost with the DNR. Um, the ORV stickers are required um, to access the site, but the um, Oakland County uh, Annual Vehicle Pass and your DNR Rec Passport are not. So you have to have your ORV stickers and you have to pay to get in, but you don't have to have the other, um, the other two. Um, the whole park is 235 acres. There's 106 that are open now with some more coming in line soon, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, we're hoping to have all of it online by 2025. That's the current plan that we're working Which, in. Melissa, that means by 2025, then um, the Leone pit will be all done that doing what cool. you wanted them to do, and there'll be no more, left the way that no more mining there on Holdridge Road. Yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> just for your benefit. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and just a reminder that we're open to all types of ORVs. Mm -hmm. So as I said, 2021 was our first full year. Um, just kind of a look at the numbers for 2020 and 21. In 2020, we opened for less than three months, uh, but we had about four, just over 4,000 visitors in that time. Last year, we had just under 20,000 visitors for the year. So um, an interesting year, you know, with the pandemic and everything else, we're not sure, you know, if this is what our numbers will always look like or if this is still kind of because we opened during a pandemic. So some hellacious rainfalls too last year. Yes, they were very bad too. for yeah. everybody. Um, significant yeah. <laughs> weather events that um, severely impacted our operations and our bottom line in terms of the budget for the park. Yours on the road commissions. Yes. <laughs> Um, so this first school year really was a building and learning year for us. There was a lot of activity at the park. I mean, there always will be just because of the nature of what it is, but mm -hmm. uh, we were very busy out there. Um, and a major focus for us was on dust and sound control. And I'm just realizing I forgot to introduce Jamie, <laughs> who is the park supervisor for Groveland Oaks here and Holly Oaks. Um, okay. We moved up from uh, Independence Oaks as the supervisor. So mm -hmm. sorry, supervisor. Is that, are you the, like, the new DJ? That's right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just, now I know who you are. I grew up with the new Julie, too. <laughs> yeah, and we are about to hire just started as an assistant park supervisor. It's in the works. In the works that will spend half their time at the RV park. So we're stepping yeah, up. If you happen to have a card, I'd like it if you could drop one off to me at some time, okay? I will do that. Okay. okay. Um, so this is really more of a slide for our commissioners, but I just wanted to note a couple things on here um, for you guys that I thought you might find interesting to see kind of what we're working towards. We're essentially creating a whole new business, right? So we knew that in our first year, we were not going to be revenue positive because there's a lot to do. There's still a lot to do over the next couple of years. So you can see here, we show in what our loss gain was in 2021 and also what it's projected for 22 through 25. Um, what that 50% loss share with the DNR looks like, and then what our total, the Hearts and Rex bottom line is. So you can see, we're trying to be as conservative as possible. Our goal is to be revenue positive if we absolutely can. But right now, we're not really projecting to see that until 2024. Mm -hmm. So our commissioners understand, you know, we're building a new park, we're learning as we go, we're making changes every year. Our goal is by 2024 to be able to start putting revenue from the park back into the park. Well, and you got over 100 acres that still has to get turned up into it. Yes. So. Yep, exactly. 
Um, so the vision for the park, which we've been working on updating our park master plan right now. So um, in general, the vision for the park, which looks out for the next four years, is for us to become sustainable. Um, operation of the park will be revenue positive and flexible to adapt to fluctuations in use. Uh, we want our features to be weather resilient, um, <laughs> <laughs> adapted to the landscape, the climate, and the changing market for ORV experiences. We want to be able to be nimble if we you know, see different types of vehicles more off and out of the park. Uh, we want to effectively continue to manage our dust and noise and be an environmentally responsible neighbor in both Brooklyn and Helen Townships. Um, you got insurmountably better at that as the year went on. We're getting there, yeah. yeah. Um, and be a positive economic impact on the community and the businesses here, and those that we'll be bringing in, I'm sure. Um, so our financial objective, as I mentioned, was to be revenue positive. This is more for our commissioners. She's showing the ways that we're working on that. You know, within our operating budget, we have some levers that we can that we work on to try to be revenue positive. We also have a five-year infrastructure plan that's heavily based on grant funding from the DNR. So we're looking to them for um, you know some of our infrastructure improvements, which I'll mention in a second. Um, and our five-year capital improvement plan, which essentially we're looking to for sponsors. Um, yeah, and actually surprising, I think, to me was that you had a significant number of people that actually rented the park for specific activities. Yeah. So it wasn't, it's not just the general public day using it. You had a yes. pretty extensive amount of people that rented the park for a day or a week or two weeks. Or That's what I was whatever. wondering. The business, yeah, we, how's that impacting your Revenue projection. It's huge. Um, we knew that it was going to be a factor and we were hoping to get business mm -hmm. use of the park, but um, it's, it is essentially staging our budget at this point. And I think for this coming year, we already have close to $100,000 in That's rentals. Right. Um, or was there last week? GM's going to be there tomorrow. Um, yeah. Several other people have been up there numerous times, but mm -hmm. yes. So part of that is the reasoning why the park is open on the weekends is so that we can bring in that additional revenue on the weekdays where you know the public use would be low, mm -hmm. but we can get in those businesses and make that money back. Ultimately, you have enough of them that I think are interested in it, that there's a good chance that there'll be a whole community of um, tenants that might mm -hmm. be on the township's property that really want to use your yeah. facility because it's so close. And obviously, the way we're developing it, um, you'll be able to go from our property into your ORV park without ever going out on a public road. Yes, and there's a lot of folks that are talking about that. And we have when these guys come out a lot of times they're dropping shipping containers or they're bringing out other yeah. storage stuff while they're out there, but it'd be great if they could just hop in and yeah. store. Just just so you know, this just happened in the last well, couple of days, really. Um, we're awarding the contract as soon as we get it written up for the new fire station. And then I've also made arrangements with Barry, who's going to cut the road in from what used to be the gully run yeah. over by the Mapis and fire station yep. up all the way through behind uh, over by Tri City and over to Shields Road. Nice. So there'll be a class, uh, a county spec gravel road from down where we are in Mapis is all the way up into there for people to be able to get a better idea of what we're doing with the park. That's probably the first thing yeah, before we start great. marketing the other projects. Would, awesome. it, would it be out of line for our planning commission to have a copy of your five year? infrastructure plan oh yeah we can give so that, that to you yeah, yeah. i mean yep, absolutely. since this all really does end up tying in together i would think mm -hmm. that would be prudent yep. more work jim <laughs> <laughs> um so these are just some examples so that infrastructure plan this is where we're looking to the dnr's or v trail improvement fund which is for trails and or v facilities in the state um that's been our main source of funding over the last few years for some of the bigger projects like parking lot project was fully funded by this grant. Um, we're applying this year to, I think it's due actually April 1st, to develop a youth riding area. Uh, we're trying to bring in more families, more kids, get more people interested in the sport. Uh, so we're looking at developing a youth riding area kind of just off the parking lot so that you can see it, you know, from the parking lot and see some parents to get to and, and for kids to have a place. I, I don't think the general public realizes how much of the community <laughs> uses those facilities r really is family oriented. Yeah, it really I, I had a legislator tell me, oh, I guess if they'll be out there drinking beer or whatever. And I said, they like that at all. I've been yeah. there. You're more likely to see a fairly young couple with two toddlers and baby seats in the so back seat of their seats. Jeep. Yeah, <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah. True. In fact, I don't know if it's ever happened, but I haven't seen anybody drinking out there. 
No, I don't know of any problems. Yeah. No, people are very respectful. Yeah, they and, and they're I mean, and you screw this up, it goes away. So. And, and the community itself, at least in the Jeep part of it, is very uh, homogenous about trying to help each other and very family oriented. It's just quite surprising. It was an eye opener for me. Yeah, it's a very self policing group, which is nice for us. Um, but some other areas we'll be working on in the future, you know, more storm resiliency modifications, water management and irrigation, uh, some pavilion structures, and then just some some other infrastructure projects, um, you know, for trails and different features that we want to build. Um, this list isn't going to make any sense to anyone because these are catchy names that John Noyes came up with to <laughs> sponsors excited. Um, but these were just some examples. So essentially, we're creating a master list of potential projects that aren't necessarily things we need to do, but things that we would like to do. And we can get some sponsors to come in and fund them. So lots of really cool ideas that we've been working on. Um, just to give people something new and different and exciting out there and also bring that sponsor revenue. But, but that stuff, the one you have there for Magna right now is really, that's great advertising oh, for yeah. them. Yep. <laughs> so for this year, um, and you heard saw sort of some of our budget woes, <laughs> we've, we've done a few things to adjust our pricing. So last year we were $15 if you bought your ticket online and $20 if you buy it at the gate to try to drive people to buy them online. We looked around at what everybody else is essentially doing for their daily access and we're way under that. Um, so knowing that we were under the market and that we need the revenue to go back into the yeah. park, we I, switched I, to just a $30 flat rate. For I remember year. a lot of your volunteers saying that 15 bucks is way too low when yes. we started. Yeah. So we're just now starting to kind of eat that out to the public. We put a video on Facebook with, with uh, Jamie and Jim the other day that just kind of led into the fact that we are going to be raising fees. So we've got kind of a rollout plan that we're working on. Um, but because of that, we're offering up a couple other things for those people that do come out all the time and maybe don't quantity want to Yeah, so a couple things. Um, we're doing a, it's going to be essentially a virtual punch card, um, but for $120, you get five visits instead of four. Um, and then we are offering a season pass this year for $250. Bucks. Um, we're limiting it to $100 just because we're not sure exactly what the market mm -hmm. is going to be for that. Um, so we're also trying to drive up the demand a little bit if it's a limited quantity. So we're very interested to see how that works out. Um, and then we are offering a youth rate. So we're working on a youth riding area. We wanted to offer a youth rate so that if a family with two kids comes out, it's $30. Instead of That's actually a good idea. A lot of ORV parks have a whole section kind of set up for kids that are on yep. small dirt bikes. So they're not interspersed with somebody coming down on a 400 cc bike yeah exactly yeah. what what is your limits for um, <clears throat> vehicles or people on any given area of there do you have a, a we don't have limit? capacity limits you per don't? feature okay. no just for the park in general okay you, yeah you actually they have but they have some facilities that help limit the the use of a certain trail to the kinds of vehicles they want on Yes. Yeah. So that you don't end up with conflicting uses. Right. So. The rule has been if you can fit through the entrance, you can use it. So yeah. if you know there There's are some skinny entrances and big ones. Yeah. <laughs> so there are some features that only the side by sides and the bikes can get sure. through, and there are some that are big enough that everybody can use them. And those are kind of self-selecting too. If it's something that if it's a track that generally the bigger trucks and the jeeps are using, the motorcycles might not really want to be there. So it doesn't work itself. And there are several directional trails too. Yeah. And one way trails in there, clearly <clears> marked. <throat> And she may cover this later, so I don't want to jump on it. Uh, we, the Price Commission approved there's two weekends that will be completely free this year. Oh, yes. I oh, so, wow. so there's some total no-cost weekends um, that are the state-designated, kind of like everyone knows a lot of the free fishing. Fishing, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's okay. a free ORV weekend. Yeah, but that, that might actually yield you a lot more regular users. Yes, so. yes, that's um, so we're definitely ramping up our marketing for this year. We, when we opened in the fall of 2020, there was so much uh, pent up demand and excitement. We were only open for a few months that we were having sellout days. We were inundated with people. We, you know, everything was gangbusters. So we really didn't have a strong marketing plan for 2021 because we didn't think that we would need it. <laughs> um, but, but we do. So our numbers were a little bit lower this last year than where we thought that they should have been. So we are ramping up our marketing efforts for this year. Um, a lot of it's going to be event-based marketing, so we're going to be doing some um, a veterans events around our Forces Day and Veterans Day. 
Um, we're going to have some theme nights throughout the summer. So um, rotating between a women's night, a motorcycle ATV night, a youth night, and a side-by-side -side night, just so that people know, you know, hey, if I come out on this Thursday night, there's going to be a lot of women drivers out there, or there's going to be a lot of other dirt bikes out there, right? So we <laughs> might, might, might draw other women, might draw other men, you know. <laughs> Either way, we're going to get more people out. Who, who wants to go to a bar, right? <laughs> Um, we held the first uh, Disability Dirt Day last year in partnership with La Fontaine Automotive Group, and it was a huge hit. Um, Sandy's been telling me her phone's been ringing off the hook for people that want to participate this year. So mm -hmm. we're actually going to be hosting two, and La Fontaine is coming back to sponsor it again. Um, we think that that's going to grow and be a really big event. You know, and some of those, when you have special events, maybe if you want to let us know, we, we might be able to put them up on the sign out here yeah, because. Sure. The people driving up and down Grange Hall, a lot of them are going through to some other community. Yeah. They would have an opportunity to see it. Yeah. Perfect. Um, we Our to video to guy, Vinny, will do that for oh, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we tried to trunk or treat last year. The weather was awful, so we didn't get a whole lot of participation, but we'll do that again. Um, we are also partnering with the DNR to tap into some of their state marketing opportunities that are available to them and their budget, which is much bigger than ours. So, um, so new advertising there. Um, and then we're looking at doing more video than we've done in the past. Um, the DNR has been putting some videos together for us. Um, and we're putting some together on our own too, so we know that that really draws people's attention. I talked to John a while back and said, and I think you were with us that day, and I said, we want to put a promotional video together for what we want to do on our, our property. And I'd actually like to link oh, yeah. it with what you've got going for the park, because I think it just sells the whole concept. Yeah, definitely. So, we need lots of people. Jim and I have a, uh, a big to do as soon as we get done with the fire station getting all signed up and everything to get started on that this year. So I'm uh, anxious to do that with you. Yeah. And I think John said that state of Michigan economic development people were offering to help on that too. I thought maybe I got that wrong, but I thought that's what he said. They might have. Yeah. yeah they might have. Um, so probably the most exciting thing that's going to happen this summer is that we are, you can flip to the next one, and pop to the other. Um, so this is obviously the park that's open now. This 62 acres, kind of long linear 62 acres closest to I-75 is what we're looking to open in July. Mm -hmm. um, we're working with the mine operator and the state to get that all squared away. July is, I think, kind of best case scenario and what we're hoping for, but, you know. No monsoon. Joking that, that's the <laughs> but we're working on it. Um, but we're very excited about that. There's already some trails that are built in there. There's whole roads already. So we aren't going to do a whole lot, um, which is great because we don't have to add any additional staff and not a whole ton of new maintenance. Um, well, so. And just so the people like Janelle lives on Holdridge Road. So the reason the mining's still partially in there is those last sections that aren't in that yeah. elliptical blip are not quite mined out to the way they want it. So they the whole process that's been going on is a process of, okay, you get your dirt out, but when you're done with it, we want it to look like this or that. And, and that's how they're finishing it up. Okay. And that, that parcel at the end, that is not someone's house, that is state owned. Which <laughs> yeah, that just, you guys just bought that recently, right? <laughs> that's state owned. Yeah. The, the tan part or the brown part? This one is, this one is a holdout, but this one we don't. And the holdout, they don't want to sell to us. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is perfectly okay. It's just we were interested, obviously, because of the way that it cuts out, but sure. Um, oh, <laughs> station is that there now? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> is, is that thing already there now? It's not, but it will be in the next couple okay. of months. Um, so we've been working with Jeep on this for a very long time, and the attorneys that finally agreed on language that everybody's comfortable with in terms of liability. Um, but this is a partnership that Jeep has with a company called Electrify America to put these solar power or EV charging stations around the country. We're one of two sites in Michigan. So um, we're just waiting for our, the second phase of our parking lot project to wrap up, and then we're going to work on it. And they're completely the freestanding. There's actually no, yep. no permit for an electrical connection or anything. The thing comes in as a unit. Yep. It gets set on a parking lot, right? Yep. Yeah, we're going to put it, I think, along Dixie Highway is where we decided in the end. So. Yes. Closer to the entrance where it's visible and but inside the parking area, the yeah. Because yes. my only concern was the first drawing you sent us had it on the Dixie outside that, that was park. You wanted to put yeah. it like up on the hill. So and and I said I, I, somehow I can see a congestion when people are trying to get in and out of the park, and, yeah. and then they moved it in. I think that's fine. Yeah. 
and an electric Wrangler is in the works. Uh, they were testing those a few weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> is it a single charger or multiple? Two vehicles, essentially, and you can pull up on either side of it. Um, our best Cabo Bear station opened late last year. Um, then the design promptly blew down in one of those horrible windstorms. So <laughs> I never even saw it. We're working on getting that back up. Um, but for folks that maybe aren't aware or understand how important this is, this is something people have been asking us for out there since. They let the air out of their tires. Yeah, the they let the air out of their tires so they can get better grip and traction on some of those climbing elements. Then they can't drive home. And then they can't drive home. Yeah. So at the end of the night, in the dark, we have a bunch of vehicles in the parking lot with their personal generators, like carrying all the tires. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so this actually lines up. How many are there, Jamie? Eight? Oh, uh, yeah, eight yeah. to ten. They're all along that wall. You yeah, so see there, yeah, plus those additional ones on. Uh, yeah, so we put the station with kind of the two antique looking ones there for the, um, you know, kind of the showy spot, and they and they are functional. But then all along that whitewashed fence um, are additional hoses as well. So is that photo from the park? Yeah, yeah. Um, That's got to be just on the other side of the road in. That area there. It's, it's where, like, just when you go past the contact station, there's like a bump out. Yes. On that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the um, opposite side of the road into Barry's property back there. Okay. So, another fun thing we're doing just to bring in an additional user out here. Um, people have been asking for it, and our volunteers were really excited to work on this. So, it's back in the back kind of by the maintenance area, but now you can come in, you can bring your RC cars, you can oh. drive all the way back oh. there. <laughs> Yeah, it's so a mini park, park. It's, mini park in the park. Mini park. Yeah. Mini park. Yeah. So that's coming along pretty nice. I don't know exactly when we plan to open that to you, Jamie. So they're hoping to open it by this fall. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's in, it's in the works. It's going to be very, very cool. So yeah. we're hoping that'll bring in some new people as well. And then Jamie mentioned the free OR Me weekends. Um, we are very excited to partner with the DNR on that this year because I do think it'll bring in a lot of people who maybe otherwise wouldn't have come up to check it out because sure. you're saving the $30 per vehicle to get in. Mm -hmm. You're saving the 32, 36, 36 whatever it is. plus the trail. Yeah, to, to get in with your ORV sticker. So it really is, you know, saving you if you've got a couple of vehicles. Oh, so you don't need an RV and ORV sticker. You don't need anything coming in on those things. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So we're working out the logistics right now for how we're going to manage that. But yeah. Alicia, you want to ride a horse in? <laughs> <laughs> Pack rule might be better though, right? <laughs> uh, and then just to wrap it up, April 23rd, we have been open uh, one weekend a month throughout the winter, um, just to kind of test that out. And, yeah, I don't know. Do you have kind of a synopsis on how you think that went? Or? Good. There's enough interest on that one weekend that the hardcore people will come out. Usually it's a lower attendance, kind of in the 40 to 60 vehicles per day. There was. <laughs> I think in the three weeks, uh, I was there in January, February, <coughs> March, there was only truly one nice day in those three weekends. <laughs> and that one Saturday, we, we got over 75 vehicles in the, on a winter day, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So if there's the weather's nice, you will get some people, but a couple of days, it was brutal. Yeah. So this was kind of our test to see, like, if we are open, will people come? So we'll probably continue to do that. I don't know if we'll ever increase it, but we'll see what the demand is. Um, but our weekends are officially <coughs> open on April 23rd. Right. Thank you for giving us the update. Yes, no problem. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. We're excited too. Yeah. It's going to be a good year. So, Jamie, do they give you an ORV to rehearse around with? I have, it's not mine, but there is, a, <laughs> there is a GM lease vehicle that has a bunch of graphics and vinyl work on it. That's uh -huh. kind of how it looks. The GM's letting us borrow. Yeah. A nice PRP strategy. Exactly. Yeah. My goal for them is for you. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate yeah, it. Very cool. yep, no problem. Okay. Well, that finishes it for presentations today. Um, I have nothing under public hearings and nothing under unfinished business. So we'll move right to items on the agenda. New business. The first item is to discuss the master plan overview after we have now um, beat the master plan to death. Okay. <laughs> it, it is done. And uh, we have to do the uh, final approval here today. The, the only real substantive change we've made, unless Jim, you want to add something, is that we, we did uh, modify the Dixie Overlay District. And after talking with the Michelle, our consultant, 
we thought it would, I, I told her that one of the problems on the townships 90 acres there is that I can't give you exactly what the shapes of the parcels will be. We have a preliminary drawing that Barry was good enough to provide us for the layout on it, but I don't have those surveyed parcels combined and redivided, and I won't know until we get it in there. It's subject to kind of what we get in the way of tenants that come in. For the example, the one we're talking to now has already changed what they were looking at two or three times, and we want to be accommodative to that. So I told her what we needed to do is pull that out of the overlay district, the township's 90 acres there, and come up with something specific to that property where we would be able to adjust lot sizes and some extent the zoning when we actually get ready to move the construction that way. We're gonna start over by the um, Mavis Task Force One building and the fire station, get that first road cut in and get those lots over there available, so both on our property and Barry's first. And so we need a little flexibility until we see what people actually wanna buy. Right, because some of these are based on frontage and we don't know what that yeah, is. Yes, okay. you're right, exactly. So that, that's the only real difference that's been made in the overlay district from the discussions we've had before or from the master plan. So uh, I wholeheartedly <clears throat> hope we approve this today <laughs> so that we're, we're done with it. And I will pass a copy on to Holly once it's uh, officially done because they do want to adopt whatever we're doing in the overlay district as well. But these are the Dixie Highway overlay standards. So with that, um, I'm open to any questions or comments, but I'm hoping we can put this through tonight and. Then Patty, I think you got to put it in the paper once, right? And it's yes. eight days later it, or something. Eight days later, it will be. Uh, you know. We'll have our overlay district official. How does it affect the businesses that are already there? Well, that none of them there have to. It's uh, any ordinance change you make to anybody that's already there is always grandfathered in. But it, over time, the idea is that eventually, as uses might change, they have to comply with the new, new things. Well, and so. they're probably going to want some continuity as, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And then how is this enforceable? Uh, well, actually, the overlay district gives us more, more structure, more um, latitude in how we want the developments to be done than just the normal master plan or the normal ordinance. So the whole purpose of this, if you go back to the original discussions when Ben was still here, was um, you can have somebody, and they showed us some photos, I think, when the history group went through. Here's a McDonald's and it looked like an old 200-year-old uh, home or something. Yes. Said, they don't build those because they want to. They build them because the building code or the overlay district where they put it said, that's how you will build it. And so that's how you ultimately get the kind of look we're looking for, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm very excited. I think mm -hmm. this is the best thing we could have done. And mm -hmm. one thing that Melissa neglected to mention tonight is they are going to do the landscaping along the front there on the oh, fence. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. We were here before we were questions. Yep. Yes. And, and I just say that because I said the one thing, you know, they kind of got started on it and then they got sidetracked on some stuff. I said, we've got to make it look better than on the front. So they're going to take that. I saw you moving so, it out. So already. I am going to say that's why I asked about enforceability because I know that it's state and um, I'm on the uh, Board of Appeals. Okay. And yeah. The parking lot and the landscape is, you know, the yes. due dates are trees and kind of dicey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, okay. That and quilts for the sign. Yes. Remember? Yeah. Two quilts okay. for the sign. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that gives us a 20 foot barrier anyway, right? So, th that's what I have to say. Unless you have a question, I guess a motion uh, would be in order for. For recommending uh, approval. And... Yeah, um, I'm sorry. Anything else? I'll, 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 I'm going to try to make a motion. You know, I'm not good okay. at this. So I would like to make a motion that we accept uh, the changes to the master plan and the overlay district as one, I believe. Article 3, Division 17. I knew that. Article 3, Division sorry. 17. Sorry. No, are you kidding? <laughs> And to go in effect eight days after published. What she said, please. <laughs> it's like I'm the sorry. Seinfeld episode, the yada yada part, right? No, it's got to be proper. Okay, is there a second to the motion? I'll second that. Okay, any questions or comments from the board? Let's do this officially. Uh, Janelle, if you could take a roll call on it. Bill. Yes. Christopher. Yes. Ms. Riley. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, everybody. I will send a copy right now before I forget to Holly. So there. 
and I will publish it um, in Wednesday's paper. I will take the text that uh, Michelle wrote for us. Okay. Thank you, everybody. It's almost anticlimactic after all the time we've spent on this. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to discuss this MDOT permit resolution. And I'm going to tell you, you have an uh, email that I got on it. We, I don't thank know. You. Thank you very much, everybody. I, I, I don't know that we uh, have ever actually used one of these MDOT permits, to my knowledge. But if we don't adopt this resolution and something comes up that we want to do it, I don't want to be restricted from being able to do it. So I would suggest that we approve this resolution in the event we need it. I mean, uh, for example, if we do the uh, the Holly you know, car show again, the Dixie Byway car show again, if that continues to expand and get bigger, we might want to do something with notification on Dixie. And I just don't want to be locked out of that option. So I would ask uh, that the board approve this resolution so that we have the option should we need it going forward. That's, that's my motion. Is there a second to it? I'll support. Okay, thank you, Patty. Any questions or comments from anybody? If not, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, we're cruising. Uh, Next item on the agenda is discuss the emergency vehicle for the fire department. Chief, I'm going to ask you to cover that for us. Okay. This is the second ambulance that we want to get. All right. This is the remount. We uh, offer the emergency vehicles plus. There is a shortage of uh, chassis available. We were supposed to get, I think, six this year. They cut them in half. There are no Chevy chassis available. He's got three, four chassis coming in. Okay. They expect in the fall of them. So, uh, I submitted two of them. What the Ford one is a uh, 2023 uh, Ford FE450, 4 by 2 7.3 liter gas. As you know, with the diesels, there's a we're trying to bring a diesel in. It's a $2,000 bill just to get it to work on it. And then we had some issues with the death fluid on the, the first one that we got that we just, you know. Plus, shut, not shut down. diesel we'll fuel's through. really gone up. Oh and it's also, yeah. but it's, we're going to a uh, safe mode where you couldn't go 30 miles an hour. Well, that's not very good. For <laughs> so we don't, uh, and we've had good luck so far with the gas, uh, gas uh, ambulance. So, uh, so if we get this now, and the one we ordered a couple months ago, when they both come in, we'll have two brand new ambulances. Right. And we'll keep whatever the best spare is and get rid of the... We'll see, but, uh, the, this is includes towing Alpha One, which is at Bedrock Express right now out mm -hmm. there. Do the custom graphics and everything. And this was also we're going to turn in Alpha Four once we get. Yeah, you get rid of two of them to get this one. Yeah. Correct. And uh, so the total price was one hundred thirty-two thousand seven ninety-four. That's going up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, he needs us to. Uh, one was the deposit and then the sign of the agreement saying that we're going to buy it so that you can lock us in. I think it was, was it 66,000. 66,397, it says. Yeah, that's just one of them, correct? Correct. Right. Yeah, we, we approved the other one yeah. out of that. Right. Um, ARPA money. ARPA money. This yeah. one we would end up approving no, out of our infrastructure. And the other one's all new truck. Right. This one's a remount. That was a four by four. So we'll have two four by four trucks. And as you know, we spent uh, totals about fifty three hundred dollars for Alpha Two to get a new transmission, new battery. New, they went through and they put a new exhaust system on it too. So, uh, and then on Alpha. Seven the other, I guess two weeks ago, we couldn't. It was shifting, it was getting difficult, and then it didn't shift at all. And uh, Justin Rose got new cables for it for about $170. He was able to fix that. So, no, oh, that was good. And now Alpha 7's got rear brakes. Well, hopefully, these get in. We're in a lot better shape with two new ones. Anyway. Um, so the difference is this one we would take out of the infrastructure money because we freed up some money now that would have been used for the sewers if it hadn't taken 10,000 years to try and get the capacity to the county line. <laughs> so the Chevy's not available, but I'm still going to ask, is there any 
any drawback to the Ford? I noticed that the Chevy was more expensive. Well, I'm just a Chevy guy, and okay. the guys are Ford guys. Okay. Fords are available, Chevy's on. Okay. Uh, honestly, we've had, you know, they're basically. You've had both, anyway. We've had both. We've had both. Right. We have two Chevys right now, uh, Alpha 2 and Alpha 7, and Alpha 4 and Alpha 1. You know, I'm just curious, long term, because they're fairly short runs, you normally go on miles wise. Do you think these will, in the foreseeable early future, ultimately be replaced with electric ones? I certainly hope not. <laughs> I mean, this technology could... really has to be improved because if we sit on scene with our lights on. Oh, okay, you'd uh, be burning up current then. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see that. Yeah. I mean, we have a heavy draw on the front. So yeah. It's just like when they said, oh, we're to turn off. I don't see that. I hadn't thought of the lights and all that. Yeah. Okay. Elon might have some plans, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It'll be a rocket. <laughs> It'll be faster than Elon. Um, maybe I, I'm just wondering, refresh my memory on how we chose to take this from the infrastructure fund rather than ARPA funds. Uh, well, because I was uh, kind of looking to take the rest of that ARPA money to fix the uh, overage on the fire station. That's why. Okay. Uh, we, we could flip it either way. I it doesn't really, really care. matter. No, You're just it's saying. Six of one half dozen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, that it was really it was just, you know, take one from here and one from there, and the rest will use for the well, overage I guess on the really, fire station. We're going to spend all the ARPA funds. Oh, yeah. Every penny. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that rest assured, yes. Yes, I mean, I would rather, you know, deplete those, yeah. but whatever. Either way is fine, because I know that there, you've got, you know. Essentially, all of this is uh, being of used on the fire stuff anyway. It's either yes. the ambulance or the building. Okay. So we need to approve this today uh, so that uh, we can set this order deposit. For truck and supply mm -hmm. the deposit, correct. Okay. You want a motion? Yeah. All right, sure. I'll make a motion that we approve the deposit of $66,397 uh, to emergency vehicles plus or and is it Os Osage Ambulance remount? Yes, Osage. Osage. Oh, that's orange. Okay, Osage Ambulance remount. Is there right. a second? I'll, I'll second that. What? Okay. More? Do you have a question? Oh, and to take it from the yeah. infrastructure oh, fund. Oh, sorry, yeah. I got yeah. the line up. I'm sorry. And to take it from the infrastructure fund. And um, okay. Okay. Is that all right for your second two? Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Are there any questions or comments from the board? Okay. Janelle, this one's for a lot of money. So if you could take a roll call. So say you're yes and you're little. Yes. <laughs> Christopher? Yes. Mozarelli? Yes. Obama. Yes. Back. Yes. Bill. Yes. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Next item on the agenda. This is really another one to kind of give us some edge on it. This discuss the WOTA transit interlocal agreement. WOTA is a group that takes care of doing transports for seniors and handicapped people and stuff. And they're real big at some of the communities, but most of the communities that are larger than us have a big budget available to do it. I think some of them like White Lake and Orient spend many tens of thousands of dollars supporting some of those transport services. The only thing we have right now is the money we give to from SMART right. to the seniors um, for $5,396 a year. But here's what's happening. WOTA is trying to get a grant that will cover two or three years funding in the hopes that if they do it, everybody will feel comfortable that it's a more cost-effective solution for the participants. So they're asking all the communities to have these various programs, will you give us your transport dollars so that we can say all of you are involved in our grant request? And I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know if they're gonna get it and they don't know either. But the reason they wanna do it, the supervisors are, have been discussing this uh, recurring effort coming from Detroit to try and take that rapid transit bill and have it passed because Macomb is out of it by Detroit and by, by Wayne County and by Oakland County. And if that happens, the way we're set up right now, in all reality, I think all of us out here on the North End are going to get, if they pass it, absolutely nothing out of it. Okay. If we do this, 
we would at least be able to say, well, why don't you let us tap some of those transit dollars for what we can use? And then maybe we could get some of that money back and use it for seniors or disabled people to be able to get transport dollars that we don't do now. So uh, I'm being honest with you. We don't know if it's gonna happen, but they're trying like heck to do it. I think it is beneficial for us to support their effort to try and get that grant so that if they do, and if the RTA goes through, we have an option then to be able to say, well, at least give us some of that money to provide a service that our residents could actually use. So that's the long, long story. <laughs> and um, the people that use it seem to be pretty happy and think that it has some real cost advantages for the programs they have, but they have much bigger mm -hmm. transit facilities because they got a lot more people than we do. Mm -hmm. So they got a big, much bigger tax base to be able to do it. On. So. And the only funds we really have towards that type of transportation smart. is our smart money. Right. So. In the amount of $5,396. Right. However, I do have, want to add, mm -hmm. um, right now our smart money goes to our senior funds, Holly mm -hmm. and Brandon. Mm -hmm. This, if it were to happen, um, it would not only transport seniors, it would transport uh, disabilities, people. Um, yeah, we have had several parents yeah, with adult sure. children or teens that are able to work a job, but you know they don't have a way to get them there. Mm -hmm. This would help with that. This would and, cover and, this. And at least if they get that, if they do get that rapid transit through where we have to pay it anyway, we would be able to get something out of it then. So that's the that's the analysis. And right now, we're not signing over the fifty. No. And it, it, no, no, no. And if it doesn't happen, they don't get it. Or if we decide at the end of the grant we don't want it, you don't have to be in it. We could see what happens. But this is to help them have a better chance at getting the grant and to leave us an option going forward. And it would not leave our seniors high and dry because they would be able, if this were to thing, happen, yeah. they would be able to contact here and get a ride. Um, we have had a couple of seniors who the seniors, nothing against them, but you know, they have a limited, not the seniors, but the buffing, right? They have a limited amount of or um, area Coverage. where they can go to. So like I had a senior who needed to go to the uh, Flint for his doctor's appointment, neither senior center transported that far. Right. And they usually are in the time frame as well. Exactly. They have to be back by. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So it's, so it's like chicken soup. It can't hurt, you know. <laughs> so is there, a, is there a motion to support this resolution for WOTA? Um, I will make a motion that we um, support the WOTA transit <clears throat> interlocal agreement. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay, any questions or comments from the board? If not, um, just to be safe, can you take a roll call on it, Janelle? And then I don't have to do this tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay, Scott. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. I'm That's so happy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Patty just informed me that she already had it all written up with the information filled in. So. Yeah, just, you know, yeah. we're good. So, okay. Uh, the next item is yours, Patty. Discuss the uh, document scanning that we looked at. Yes. Yeah, so when we did the uh, budget workshop, uh, we built into the budget $25,000 to scan our uh, documents. We're running out of space in the basement and uh, people call in and, it, you know, we don't have a huge staff. So it's like somebody has to run down, look for the file, bring it up. And so I did speak to two um, vendors. Vendors, yep. Yeah. And I would like to go with the vendor. He is, um, it's called Alco Gear LLC Document Management Secure Scanning Technology. He will come here and scan, or he will take them. Um, 
it's going, the cost, I counted the boxes, we had approximately maybe 200 boxes. They're not all full. And um, it would be about 200 per box. So it is quite a bit. In our budget workshop, we did agree that this might be a project that we get started, go to the limit of the 25,000 and next year, see if we can budget, if we can't get it all done for that mm -hmm. amount. I would like to go with this vendor. He, um, he pulls staples at no charge. He will do the big um, oh, plant maps, uh, plans. Plans, plans, like consumers, blueprints. blueprints yes. Also, he, um, he does his best to sort through. If we have duplicates, and I can attest, working in the building department, I know we had several plans that came in that are duplicates. He will go through do that there's no extra charge for any of that he does not charge us to pick the boxes up and bring them back they will go on a uh, a drive on an external drive he does suggest that we talk to our it and have it downloaded right on our um our actual server, server. Uh, however we, uh, we get two of those. So one will go directly into a fireproof safe where we know where it's at all the time. And, you know, if we put it on the server, the extra one will go somewhere, maybe at the fire department, so, or somewhere different, you know. And um, it's about- Secure location. Yes, a secure location. Yeah, so basically it's, a, approximately five cents to 50 cents per sheet blueprints are maybe a little more he said uh we did have him come in and take a box two boxes he did scan them brought it back came showed us how it works um they're in order like uh, address, if you need an address, you can type the address in, anything for that address that's in there comes up. The girls don't have to go chase, look, whatever. So I'm hoping to do, I'd like to do the um, building. Text recognition. Yes, what is it? Text recognition. Text recognition, files. yes. So even yes. if it's a really old file, but it has some typed font, right. it will identify it. Yes. Yes. So I'd like to do the building department first, and then I am um, the um, land divisions and combinations. And then um, we'll go from there. We'll see what that comes to price wise. And there is still planning and zoning. I have several air boxes of planning and zoning. We'll get into that if we have enough money left after that. And then I would like to, our minutes, board minutes are on the, um, I can't think, I meant to look at how far back do our board minutes go right now where you can, we can search them. Maybe 2008? Yes. Maybe we didn't go all the way back. We have to keep board minutes in hard copy form, no matter what. However, you know, I think it would be a huge advantage if we could all have those scanned anyway. also, everything mm -hmm. that's in there, mm -hmm. have it all scanned. So then once your time frame drops, no, you can no, get rid like of the hard copy. No, we cannot get rid of hard copy yeah. on minutes. Yeah. Oh, ever, however, after it's the time frame. I thought you only have to keep it. You said, what was it, eight years or something? No, no. Oh. That was, we, oh. have a, we have them scanned where somebody can go in and pull them up and look for what okay. they're looking for. Um, I would also like, I'll bring that back at a different board, at a future board meeting to discuss destroying what we have in the basement. Let's get it scanned. Hang on to it a little bit is my thought to make sure that, you know, I have no way of knowing that everything was scanned. I, I'm sure it will mm -hmm. be, but make sure it's working out well before we destroy any. I mean, have the guy with the yes. shredder truck. Again, or something yes. Like that. Do you know what software he's using to do all that? 
Um, is that in his information? Mm, I don't see it. I don't see it either. They're all just PDFs. Yeah. She's probably using an Acrobat, which we have a license to. So if we need to amend them or access them further, we can easily do that. I was, that's what I was getting at. Okay. So he's licensed, insured, bonded, and he's ARMA. He's an ARMA member. Um, but he is from, I don't know if I mentioned, Holland. So. Okay. And the thing also, there is work. no overhead. Like we don't, there's no um, pain to keep it in the cloud. It's like, it's there. Mm -hmm. Nothing at this point down the road. So how would you, how would like new documents, so new building material stuff comes in and Danielle gets it all done and everything. and. And this guy's finished for the year with what he's going to do because we hit our twenty-five thousand. So, how, do me. we have a way of, of scanning a little bit? You know, like are we doing our what we're doing scanning? right now, that's Danielle? When she gets a building permit in, anything that's connected to that building permit, if there's a letter, the um, email where the inspector proves it, she's scanning it in right now, and it, it's being attached to the BSNA building program she's also asking for yeah. electronic files of the site plans yes. or building plans yes so even if they do bring in the big images we still have that electronic attachment File. Model. right okay. right that's correct and then um right now we're currently using minutes on demand for our minutes that are all on the website are you proposing that we don't do that anymore and we just have them scanned um no i think going forward we continue with minutes on demand okay um and then i'm talking about minutes that go back from 08 back to whatever oh archived ones yes archived gotcha ones. however again i need to let you know we have to keep those in uh paper form Sure. Um, so anyway, these are, uh, let's see, pickup and delivery, no extra charge. If we wanted to do them on site, no extra charge. Um, so, he, he sorts and prepares them for scanning. Um, his resolution is 400 DPI, twice higher resolution than industry standards. Uh, all documents will be in color. Um, any record can be scanned from less than one inch to 48 and over 72. Uh, text recognition, which is the OCR where whatever, you know, is in there. If, if the Sidwell gets put in, it'll all come up. Anything to do with it. If it's an address, if it's, I don't know, a name, it'll come up. Indexing, labeling, file naming. None of that is at any extra charge. Um, Janelle and I went to Oxford Township and spoke with Curtis, who is the clerk over there, and they have done it. He has a whole list of people he's done back here. And I've run into a few others. They've all been very happy. So, I propose we go with Alcogar LLC to do our scanning and that we can get that started. For what, the 25,000? For up to 25,000. Once we meet that, I'll stop. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, bring it back for the next budget. Okay. All right. Um, Is that your motion? Yeah. Is there a second? I second that. Okay. I like your priority, your prioritization. I think that'll help a lot. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because a lot of times, you know, with not to carry on, but um, when you have land divisions and combinations, you have to go back and take a look because some of them, you know, if uh, they've been split in 10 years, they know who did what. there's a state law and you have to know who did what and when it was done and I just think that'll work best. You made the motion. Gina seconded it. Are there any other questions or comments? Matt, yeah, would you take a roll call on it, Janelle? Sure. Well, Yes. Yes. Bill? Yes. Christopher? Yes. Israeli? Yes. 
Okay. This next one was actually uh, the the request we get every year for a couple of declarations. This one's from the county, Oakland County uh, Community Health Network. They want us to declare May as Mental Health Month. So the resolution's attached. I think we should do it, and then we do. So any questions or comments on it? I motion to declare May as National is a National Mental Health Mental Health Month. Yes. Is there a second? Okay, I'll second that. Any questions or comments from the board? No. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, we're done with that one. Next item is to uh, discuss fishback or fishback, I'm sorry, engineering fee. And Jim, do you want to give us an update sure. on it? Because that's the result of the Planning okay. Commission's activity. So, everyone, uh, we have a special meeting of the Planning Commission. Uh, to discuss a little bit more of the goings on at the Renaissance Festival for traffic and parking. And it was put before the board that this organization uh, has the requisite um, subject matter experts to act as our reviewing agent for whatever the Renaissance Festival may present to us. And uh, I know the organization uh, from what I've done in work. Uh, I don't know any of the players here. I did talk to one of them. And um, it, is my recommend it was my recommendation that we entertain this organization and the Planning Commission unanimous <laughs> unanimously approved up to $7,500 to retain this group. Another component of that $7,500 is the Renaissance Festival um, will be responsible for ultimately reimbursing the township because this expenditure would not have existed had they had uh, all the ducks in a row in this regard. And uh, pretty sure that's a good synopsis of it. So I just, I have a question. The Renaissance Festival is moving forward with turning something in and what their thought is to do this. We're not going to tell them what they have to do. Right, okay, I just wanted. To and clear. have they initiated a group of their own to do? Uh, we believe it to be row engineering, and okay. somewhat parenthetically, tomorrow evening is another special meeting. Okay. Um, where row engineering, hopefully a representative of the uh, Renaissance Festival, as well as maybe a representative of the Road Commission, okay. will address. Um, I think it's situation on a macro level with the planning commission. So if it's a row, do we really need to verify what they're saying? Well, absolutely we do. The, 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 let me kind of, yeah. if I can add comment to it. Um, I think there is somewhat of a lack of agreement on the part of the Renaissance Festival with specifically what we've been asking for from the beginning. And, and repeatedly, the request has been to have somebody that has specific expertise in developing the traffic flow issues and the capacities there. And I know they use row and they've used row in the past, but we're not sure row has anybody left in their organization that actually does this function from information we've seen. So I think the planning commission's perspective on this was we would like to have somebody we think takes it that we know does this type of analysis take a look at it to come up with recommendations so that when the planning commission makes their criteria for what they have to do it will be specific enough that it has substantive data behind it and um, some of the correspondence they are doing some things at the renaissance festival and they are uh, have indicated some things that they do, but I would say the last letter that was read at that planning commission meeting, and I just went to it because I heard about it that day, um, didn't have the appearance of agreeing to do everything that the planning commission had laid out. And I think the planning commission wants to have some substantive input from somebody they know does this type of stuff. And there's really just two, two or three that we know that actually have engineers on this field. So everybody, a couple more things not to, not to beat it up. We are, as a planning commission, are not ever intending to be the subject matter experts and direct anybody. Um, we will listen to, I'm gonna put this kind of in quotes, engineering firms, because it is mm -hmm. 
common practice for two engineering firms to collaborate on a given assignment if they're lacking one component of what's needed to execute an engagement. So um, in this case, we want to hear what they're going to propose I, I, tomorrow. I suspect we're going to start almost all over again. Um, there has been something put on the table that we as Groveland Township are asking for another entry <clears throat> into the festival. I'm not aware, as long as I've been around, that we've really vocalized that. Mm -hmm. um, nor as, let's say, a slightly educated layperson in this, nor do we know for sure it's needed. I need, as, as a member of that commission, we need to see some data. We've got enough mental horsepower on the board to understand that, have it explained to us. And there are other things too that we want yeah, to find. I mean, for Jack, we don't know if it's, we don't have data that would support us at one more entrance or exit. No. or two or three and where or, should they be they control the flow is it necessary or, or not? yes exactly yeah. or none at all so that that's the reason that we're asking someone to be our uh, look over our shoulder i think the literature they had for their projected 2022 festival if i remember correctly there's a sheet in there that says they anticipate something like 280 thousand, mm -hmm. which i think is a record mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and um and how well, well, what we've never really had is we've had some years that have worked well, and then there's a breakdown, and it's always something different. What we need is, I think, a structured solution to address the recurring issues that crop up and a game plan that says, when this goes wrong, here's what happens. And, and that's what I think the Planning Commission is really looking for. So basically tomorrow night, it's a workshop. They're just gonna yeah. bring to the table what they're looking at and what um, they're thinking. Patty, I, I fix it. My opinion based upon the limited uh, emails that I've seen is that Roe is asking us, two things, asking yeah. us what do we want and what's expected of them. And, um, Okay, I think that the blanket answer is we're not going to be prescriptive. Fix the problem. Now you can tell us what you're going to do. Right? So basically, a workshop, yeah. you're going to discuss. Well, perhaps if that's then okay. he'll or the, the row will go back and formulate a plan and it will be brought to the. And because we plan. feel as a board that and we are the essence, we are pushing this. Yes. And so you're choosing. Fishback. It's Fishback to represent our interest, and right. they have Roe to represent their interest. Yes. And really, Roe and Fishback have to be on the same page. Like Roe, Roe is going to bring to us what they think they're going to need, and we're going to have Fishback saying, "Yes, if they do this, it's reasonable." Yeah, I would say it that way. Yeah. They're, they're going to yay or nay, or, or and or, Renaissance Festival is paying for it all. Yeah. How okay. are we enforcing that? Uh, we won't, well, it's a site plan uh, review. So in site plan review, there, there's an escrow account and the way they work is if it's less than that, you get money back. If it's more than that, you bill them for the rest. So. Okay. Well, they paid them now. They're all current now, on everything. Yeah. All current right now. now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if a motion, Danielle and I took a look. Okay. If a motion is needed, I'll make the motion that the township embrace uh, Fishback Engineering up to a sum of $7,500 to represent the township's interest in uh, helping us review what's presented by the Renaissance Festival associated with parking and traffic control. And Could, the festival pays more. Exactly. And, and to be. We'll reimburse the township. Could I just months. suggest that instead of embrace, approve hiring? Mm -hmm. Improve, yes. Okay. <laughs> so there's no misunderstanding okay. what I'm bracing is. Right. <laughs> yeah. I love you, baby. Yeah, I love you, baby. All right, yeah. I'll second that. Okay, are there any other questions or comments from the board? If not, because it does involve a dollar amount, even though it's billed to somebody else, I'd like it on record, the uh, roll call on it. Yeah. Yes. Bill? Yes. Christopher? Yes. Ms. Raleigh? Yes. Diploma? Yes, thank you. Next item, originally we were going to discuss the marijuana ordinance, uh, but inadvertently it didn't get published. So 
Um, we will have it on next month's board meeting, but I can tell you that the gist of it is there are actually two ordinances. One of them is the ordinance we've been discussing for some time on how do we allow the non-retail aspects of commercial marijuana. Basically, it's primarily the um, large class C growers, but it's also people that might test or deliver the stuff to the retail outlets, but it does not include the retail outlets. And how would we do that? And it was the culmination of a work session we had where we talked about a bunch of things with the township attorney and the Nascus group uh, as consultants. That's one of the ordinances and it'll be on next month's meeting. The other one is actually a separate ordinance to deal with the right of a resident in Michigan to be able to grow their own marijuana or provide up to five caregivers. And one of the things that came out in some of the subsequent discussions at my various supervisors luncheons is we think one of the issues and is instrumental in helping solve some of the other problems that get developed is we're going to require that if you're growing marijuana or a caregiver for five people it it has to be a resident owner occupied dwelling okay none of this i bought a house for three or four hundred thousand dollars and nobody lives there a bunch of strangers come and go and take care of the crop and uh, it makes people feel uncomfortable for one. And if you don't own it as owner occupier, if you're a renter, you have to have a document from the owner saying he understands that's what you're going to do and he allows it to whoever's actually renting the dwelling. The other thing is it's basically gonna eliminate it in outbuildings. So the language is uh, created towards what we think the state actually intended to do in the first place, make it viable for people that wanted to do it and not have loopholes in it big enough to drive semis through. Okay, so that's that's what it is. But we'll have it on next month's meeting because Patty's got to put it in the paper for it. For a public hearing. For a public hearing. Okay, so um, that gives you the update kind of on that. Um, the next item is, Patty, this one's yours also, yes. right? The Michigan Outdoor here. Services for our long care send the contract. And it did go up. It went up um, from last year's to this year's. It's a difference of $570, which with the gas prices and all, I have to tell you, I don't think that's outrageous. Yeah, um, Scott's always been the cheapest price. Yes, and he does our cemeteries, the township. What else? Yeah. That's pretty What's much the it. Discuss? It cuts the grass. Yeah. That's right. I mean, I don't know if anybody has anything. I, I'm just wondering this. I know this is just like what uh, a menu of his services, I suppose, but yes. he's got, you know, for doing the lawn here at the township right. and then spring and fall cleanup and then Mount Bethel and spring and fall cleanup and olive tree and spring and fall cleanup. But what would a typical bill look like? It would have <coughs> lawn cutting is a $60 per time. Yes. That's not per month, that's no. per time. And right. then there's how many times a month, like four? Well, yeah, yes, yes. So a typical month is gonna be four lawn cuttings for three different places. One time a year, there's a spring cleanup. One time a year, there's a fall cleanup. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And yeah. the whole less than that, that's 50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, there's not as much there. Right. Um, and then my question is the um, 65 per man hour on landscape maintenance. That's only if we initiate it. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Right. That's not above, or that's okay. not every right. time right. whoever's mowing the lawn gets okay. that also. Okay. No. Right. So, okay. Yeah. There's uh, no other questions on a motion that would be in order. Is that, do you want to make a pin? Um, I will motion to, now, I, I wanted to point out one more thing. Um, there is, yeah, the fuel surcharge. Yeah, that's showing but up it's on, on our It's, stuff. it's yeah. been on our past ones, too. Yeah. I right. just wanted to let that be known, if any of you. I know. I think I saw that no on a waste haulage agreement, too. Did he say how much the surcharge would be? Yes. Says, yeah, Three ninety five. If no, oh, no, 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 if it exceeds three ninety five, it would be depending on what the gas. Yeah. Is. yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to if say it oh, it's a seventy five dollar fuel surcharge because the gas went up to three dollars and ninety six cents a gallon. 
Right. I mean, did he specify what it would be or did he just say? No, he just, he's not ever specified. It just a fuel surcharge can be applied. I don't think I saw it on the waste hauler ones. I looked at 395 per gallon. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll just have to take that and see how it comes. He has, yes, no, he has not. Just to let the board know he is. Never, never assessed a, well last year the gas prices weren't that high so, no right, no and i realized this year yeah. but he did raise his we'll prices see. and i would see exactly. that reflects the increase in gas. that's my thought but i yes yeah so i'll make a motion that we um hire to contract with michigan outdoor services for a total of 17 $1,750 and um, for the uh, year beginning in um, April and through. It's going to go up way higher than that. That, like, yeah. that those are his minimum right, prices. Right, those are his minimum prices. So well, well, why don't you just make, if I could suggest it, just make the motion to say subject to the prices that were submitted in the meeting. Good point. Okay, because then if we ask them to do some other that, you know, yard work or something, the schedules here, we right. get, yeah, it is going to be higher. Yeah, I mean, it's going to cost more than seventeen hundred fifty dollars yeah. for lawn cutting for the year. Yes, exactly. That's my motion. Subject so, to a schedule. Got it. Yeah, subject okay, to the schedule. The motion? Do you want me to? Yeah. <laughs> I'll motion again. You okay. Patty. You speak Patty. Got it. She does. <laughs> That's why we can work together. <laughs> okay, Pat, Patty, you made the motion? Yes. And was it seconded? I'll second it. Okay, by Jim. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Not with the program. If not, could we take a roll call vote? Do you, know what you're voting? <laughs> sure. Do you want Appro me to approving the schedule as submitted in the meeting? Would you like to read back the motion to us? Uh, yeah, I yeah. Can probably adapt that a little bit. But back motion to hire Michigan Outdoor Services for long term for this year, which exactly right <laughs> with cost being subject to services and fee rates. Christopher yes. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Well done. You, you do I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> the, the roll call. <laughs> I should have wrote that. Phil. Yes. 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 Okay. Next, we move on to miscellaneous reports. We're on a roll now, folks. First one is Holly Youth. Uh, um, Patty. Yeah. All I have so for this month is they have skill building applications out, and this is for any youth that want to participate in a sports program um, and so on and so forth. Um, let me see what it says here. Basically, they don't want to see any youth. Skill building scholarships are provided to in the interest of keeping our youth active and involved in positive esteem building activities. This policy is a guideline for processing. And um, you do have the family must meet 2021 income limits established by the US Department of Housing. So, and it lists it. So if anybody is interested you can contact us and I will get you an application. You can pick an application up here. Okay. So that that's all I really have for them. Okay. Next then is uh, Brandon Youth, Teresa. Brandon Grove and Youth Assistance. So um, last Thursday on April 7th, they had their annual sponsor breakfast. Um, <clears> that was the biggest turnout. Um, yeah. uh, we, Patty and Bob and I were all in attendance there. Uh, there were over 50 people there. I was kind of like a who's who of who helps kids in Brandon, right? Mm -hmm. Like representing all, all kinds of places. It was it was pretty cool. Um, and Dan Stevens, principal at the high school, spoke. Um, Bob MacArthur recruited him to speak and gave him a topic to speak on. And it was the positives of COVID. So that was an interesting 
a speech. <laughs> he, said, he said, well, I get an hour and a half to talk. <laughs> and like, no, no, in no. the citizen, there's a, um, an article yeah. on it. An article, okay. Yeah. So check this out week's citizen. citizen. Um, other things that are going on next Thursday, the 21st, is their uh, 35th annual youth recognition night. And there are 189 kids being recognized and seven gold star awards for some, so there's some amazing things that have, have, have happened in this past year. Um, also, the youths have probably seen the signs and pinwheels out for autism awareness and child abuse prevention um, all around town. The BGYA put those out. There's a couple of movie nights. Um, Clifford the Big Red Dog is being sponsored by the library on June 16th. And King Richard is on August 13th. The um, BGYA has their own Facebook page and they ask you know, to like their page, check the Facebook page for all kinds of information and then share it out there to get more information out there. They are doing programs with Love and Logic. Um, and uh, they have a few other things, but they, they do say check their Facebook page. So that's basically BGYA. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Planning Commission, Jim? Yeah, a um, couple of these are gonna be a little bit of your community of what we just spoke of. But um, the Planning Commission, we talked with our planner and as we talked earlier, um, We've done beating up the master plan. We talked about the overlay. We talked about uh, some latitude with the township owned property in terms of design standards. And uh, basically, the only change is the boundaries are going to uh, pretty much stay the same. And that we also talked, as, as I said a few minutes ago, about the Renaissance Festival and getting a little bit. Uh, I don't know if the right choice or tough, tough with them, but perhaps a little more exacting of what we want out of them. And then lastly, there was a conditional approval made um, with minor revisions to a site plan presented by Sherlock Storage. That's it. Okay. Okay, Gina, BCA. Okay, good report. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for supervisor, um, I think everybody signed for the sewer capacity at the county now, the village of Ordenville signed first. I think we were actually second. And then Brandon signed uh, the other day, and I believe Holly signed the other day. So I think they're all signed on it now. We're just waiting. Of uh, curiosity, I noticed that the money we thought we were going to get back for half of that fee that we approved at the end of um, March didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So not here yet. Yeah, the board hasn't had that on their the county board hasn't had that on their agenda oh. yet, but. I won't forget to bring it up again. <laughs> okay. Um, the other item is uh, I've got a meeting tomorrow with Barry and Chief Mason to talk about the proposal you made for our building. And we need to get some stuff ironed out as soon as I have it to the point where I can have Will and his attorney, Eric, write the deal up. I'll put together the appraisals I had done on the building and the proposal for the new building so that the board can have all the facts together. And then if the public wants to see it, they're welcome to it. And, and the same thing on the bid for the uh, station. But uh, Barry made the, a very good bid on the station. I'll give you the appraisals I had on that. And I'll show you what we had for the responses for the new building. And he was much better on that than anything we've had. And, I think just from historical perspective, we're pretty comfortable working with him. We just have to get some issues uh, buttoned down and get in a document. So once I have that, I'll bring it to everybody. I, I would hope to have that by the, hopefully the early part of May, that's what I'm shooting for, okay? All documented so everybody can see it. That's really all I have right now for the supervisor's report. Patty, did you have anything you wanted to do? Um, just a couple of things. The Holly Area Veterans Resource Center, um, uh, just a reminder, they are having a town hall meeting concerning the Agent Orange and toxic exposure on May 7th at the First Baptist Church from three to five. And they will, um, there'll be a presentation followed by questions and answers uh veterans of all ages and their loved ones are invited 
and we will have service officers available, people from the VA and other resources. Um, for more information, you can contact Joe Mishler or Stu DeRu at the center. And also their moving wall. And that uh, is again, August 3rd through August 8th. And they're doing t-shirts. Uh, we have t-shirts for sale for the moving wall. They're $20, small to 3X. Contact Joe or Rick Powers. Uh, the number is 248-459-0055. And there's also a car fundraiser on June 16th. I don't have much information on that. Um, that's for the wall, and it's going to be at the Richter campus. That's all I have on that. I'll bring back more information on that fundraiser when I um, receive it. The Senior Center is pretty much back in swing. Um, there's a lot of things being offered. It's kind of nice. So if anyone's interested, give Faye a call at the Brandon Senior Center. They are doing Grand Blank Walmart trips again. Um, the Kroger's, Oxford Meyer, and of course, Beaky's if you need a ride. Um, what else? They're celebrating birthdays. They're serving lunches. Pretty much they're Playing getting, bingo. yes, <laughs> new and upcoming trips. Um, they're going to go to Greenfield Village, a Red Barn auction. Uh, what was this else here? Um, and of course, the grocery shopping Walmart. So any questions on that, give Faye a call or you can call here and we will get you the information. Next, the May 3rd Holly School election. Uh, public accuracy will be Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, April 13th at 11 a.m. Everyone is welcome. And uh, this shows you how the election, the ballots are put through the tabulator, counted, so on and so forth. Um, I think uh, if you would like an AV ballot, it's not too late. Send a call, ask for an application. We'll be happy to mail you one. You can come in, fill your application out. We can give you one. If you already have a ballot or if you at request one, you can uh, bring it in, hand it to us, mail it back, or put it in our drop box at the side of the building. It is in a secure um, drop box. And um, I, I don't know, did I miss anything else in the election, Janelle? Anything? One precinct and a very One precinct. board county board. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Probably a very board county. For a good time, go yeah. to the election, right? <laughs> yeah. They went for what did we count in the uh, 20. Oh, election yeah. how many back like 2000 2000 yeah. and they're going to probably 30 yeah <laughs> train new people yeah i don't think there'll be much over 100 so <laughs> balance but um you can show them an actual we are following one, right? <laughs> we are following election uh, law and mm -hmm. if you have any questions give us a call we're happy to answer them and that's all. Oh, the no has. Yes, Gina, <laughs> Gina reminded me. Thank you, Gina. The no has. No has is uh, starts. We have, I think this is online. Yes. It's online. And the first one is April 30th at the Oakland County Service Center campus, 1200 North Telegraph Road. And once you get on campus, follow the signs. You have to pre register. Um, do you? It I'm makes like, it a lot easier. It's, it's, easier easier online. Online. it's just, it goes a lot quicker. The line yeah. moves a lot faster. Yeah. So you do have to pre register. Okay. You don't have to, but it's a lot. They, they prefer yeah. you too. It's $10. Mm -hmm. It is $10 per car, per no car. matter how much you have. Right. Um, register at nohas.com. So, do we have that on there? We go. Sign it's yet? on the website. I put on the sign. Okay. And there are flyers here, so you can stop in again, go to the website. Um, that's it. That's all. Kevin? Do you need people to work with? Yeah, we do if anybody wants to. I don't think I anybody. Do. Oh, great. 
Hey, who did I send that memo to? Was it, I sent it to. I got it. You have it? Yeah. Can you yes. forward that to Kevin? There's a gal, it's Whitney Callio that you generally get back to. And then the other thing you have to tell them is make sure they let us know when they do it because so, Patty ends up paying them and I don't see that. But that, that'd be great if they'd said to, that'd be wonderful. Yes. They, um, mm -hmm. We tried to drop off some stuff last year. They, Oh, in fact, whoever, if one or if one or both of them decide to do it, can you have them come by? Because that's when they pick up our battery box. Yeah. If we can, I think yeah. that'd be fine. Because I think there's a couple where we didn't have anybody. So I don't yes, know. we did. It's it's better if we have a couple do it. It should, just shows good fit. It'd be great if they both want to. But if we could get at least one, it'd be appreciated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you gotta let they gotta let Patty know because I never see it after they so get signed up. And Janelle will give you the memo tomorrow, the email that says who they call. Oh. They'll love it. I, I mean, the no has people will love having somebody help them. Oh. Okay. Thank you. I didn't think of some of the fire department. Sure. Did we? Yeah. 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 Okay. I think they covered us every time. Okay. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. That's very good for us because the other small communities, it's very hard to get somebody to come up. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Chief. Great selection, suggestion. That's it, Patty, you're done? That's it. Okay, uh, Teresa, anything else you want to add? Um, yeah, in the Treasurer's uh, Department, let's see. So settlement's all finished and uh, all those documents were taken to the county before the end of March. I'm in the queue now for approval. Uh, they just go on a first come first serve basis and um, all the delinquent taxes have been loaded now. If you have delinquent taxes, you can go to the Oakland County website. It's Oakland County Treasurer's website, or you can go to our website and there's a link that says pay local taxes. You're gonna choose pay delinquent taxes, not pay current taxes, but all of the, uh, they should have the corrected amounts for the, for the fees and penalties all on there now. Um, our BSA, bsaonline.com, that um, service that, has been offered now to our residents for a little over a year, has been really getting a lot of traffic. Um, our residents who wanted to be able to look up their own tax information because they were escrowed their taxes and or they'll call and say, I'm doing my taxes. And you know, so we we always try to offer them, well, if you're not aware, we have this online. And so we've actually been getting fewer calls. And when I go in to look and see how many people you have used it. Did. Yeah, it's there's there's a lot. Good. So that's been a really good service for the residents. Um, you know, maybe at one point in time, if you want, we could make a video just on that where you could tell them like just before yeah. the tax bills come out. Or... It, it is a good resource for yeah. them to be able to figure yeah. out, you know, like because they're at their accountants right now, mm -hmm. you know. And, That'd be an interesting video. So, yeah. Um, and then March board of review was last month. There were 19. Um, I guess just petitions. items, petitions, thank you. Petitions uh, in regard to the 2022 tax year uh, for all veterans who are putting in for an exemption, um, you have to file every single year and the March Board of Review has to, um, that has to go through the March Board of Review as a petition for approval. So those were all handled um, and those veterans would have received new notifications showing that their new taxable values has uh, become zero. So they don't owe taxes. 100% Yes, 100% disabled or, or unemployable. So you have to, the, the county is saying that the new law says you have to apply every year in January. I say it's so that they can verify that you still live there and you know, you still, you're still the person that would have paid the taxes. But um, the other thing is that dog licenses are still available. Um, they'll go up in price on June 2nd. And we did get a letter from Oakland County um, Animal Control that stated that um, after June 2nd, there would be people going out and about and checking for dog licenses. So I'm passing on my due diligence and letting you know that. However, prices do increase June 2nd. So if you still need a dog license, you have until June 1st to come in here and pay um, their new price, which is went up from last year, but it will be much higher on June 2nd. Um, and then I think that's it. That's it. Okay, great. That's good stuff. 
Okay, I have nothing else except <clears throat> public comment. Is there any public comment, Dave? <laughs> Or Noreen. Yeah, and me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Save, save it for next month. Yeah. I do tell. Yeah. Vinny? I do have a question. I wonder, Patty Mac, um, at what point can you burn a shred or get rid of all that the 200 boxes worth of stuff? Is there a is there a, a statute of limitations for old blueprints and house plans? There is. Um, I am going to have to look into that to make sure we can I remember it and Jerry cannot. saying actually building prints I think for only six months legally. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, the schedule of regulations but some of the stuff we're going to be scanning that stuff that you don't want to ever if you were keeping it in paper form get rid of. I will look into to be sure that it's okay to destroy it mm -hmm. once it's on the um, server mm -hmm. and scanned. And that will help clean out the basement. We are running out of space down there. Are you looking there, for so. an office building? <laughs> yeah. Did you want to have an office in the basement? Walls, that's on one wall. <laughs> I'm just curious. But yeah, I will look into it and be sure that it is done correctly before. I mean, I'm not going to just say, okay, it's scanned. We're going to destroy it. I'm going to, I'm going to check into a few places that have done it already. Um, some people have already destroyed theirs. I'll go with them. Some people have kept them still. All right. If that's it for comment, then the motion to adjourn and reconvene for the fire board would be in order. I will make a motion to adjourn the regular meeting and reconvene for the fire board. Is there a second? I'll go ahead. Trace. I'll second that. Any questions or comments from the board? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Chief, we're reconvened for your meeting for April. Just so you know, I had an idea before about making an inbox that had a shredder in it. So <laughs> <laughs> It's it's kind of like when our phones go out on the internet, you know, it cuts way down on the workload in the office that day. <laughs> <laughs> For Mark, we ended up with 76 calls, which came out to about a little bit less than two and a half calls a day. That put us at 218 calls for the year so far. A little bit less than last year, uh, a little bit more than the year prior. Um, right now, uh, we were running slow this month, but Saturday we had five calls through the night. Really? Another day of five calls at night. <laughs> Uh, Offhand, do you normally get more calls in the night or the day? During the day, you really? but it just started out with a car accident, and we had two calls out of the trailer parks, and an accident out on 75, and then another medical on Dixie Highway. There was wow. Boom, 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 boom. Oh. Um, did an interview with uh, Sam Oliveri. He uh, works for consumers. He's the representative that goes out to different fire departments that gives a class for you know, gas and electricity. And uh, he's a former Marine captain. He lives in Grand Blank. He's still a good uh, was a firefighter. He's, he was an EMT, but that has expired. Uh, I interviewed him on Saturday. We talked, well, we. I'll bet talk, you talk. talk <laughs> I was going to say, if you swear him in, does he have to give you a hoorah at the end? <laughs> so uh, he's really. Uh, High energy guy and his brother lives next door to him, and he wants to join too. And then he has another buddy of his that uh, I think he was the firefighter EMT that is still current, so potentially might get three out of this hire. Uh, he's close enough that uh, you know, he can respond to calls and whatnot too. So I'd like to get a motion to, rec uh, to hire Sam Oliveri, uh, firefighter EMT, so he'd be a fill in status for us. And he's gonna. Renew. Renew his. He's already okay. called me about. I got there's these three classes coming up. In fact, Good. I just got an email today. The lock was going to have a class starting in May, so he might go to that one. Okay. Okay. Let's make the motion. Go ahead. All right. I make a motion that we uh, hire uh, Sam Oliveri as a firefighter and EMT um, for a fill-in position. With all his paperwork. With all his paperwork. Okay. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. Teresa, second. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Okay. Um, 
Would you take a roll call on? Christopher? Yes. Moussa? Yes. 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 I'm not sure if you're all aware, but we got notice last, but maybe two weeks from now, about putting in for the fiscal year 23 community project. Pork barrel stuff. Pork barrel stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, that told everybody how we got screwed. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> they came out on Friday saying, oh, we're not doing fire stations and police stations. Even though last year they did one for $10 million. But, so that was kind of a letdown. They, there was a little part of this that, oh, you might be able to get some money from this organization. So Stacy looking at that. Um, you know, we're going to have a new state rep after the redistricting is done here. Mm -hmm. We'll see if our fortunes change any better in that, because I'm kind of disappointed that I thought the write-up that you did for the training center and the fire station was far in excess of most of what we were, those other awards were. I couldn't believe it. We didn't get it the first time. And then to let us submit it and say, oh, yeah, by the way, that didn't come this year. Mm -hmm. And then it's too late to resubmit. Yeah, and it's too late to resubmit. So it's pretty... Okay. In my opinion, flagrant. Um, as you remember, last month I asked the approval to sell a brush one. Um, this month, the rod knock, right? Right. Um, the village of Holly had shown interest in it, but when we uh, offered it to them, it was a ridiculous offer. So we said, yeah, no, no. And then uh, Justin Rose wanted to buy it so he could use it as his um, truck for, you know, when he does the stone blast and stuff. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he made the arrangement that we'll take the pump, the tank, the radio out, and the hose reel out of it. And we're going to sell it to him for $2,000. And that's got a 350, doesn't it? Yes. So if he's got a rod knock, he's probably got a spun bearing on it. But he was part of the guys that put it in. So he knows what's going on. Well, I'm just going to say, I have a crankshaft to a 350 didn't have a spun bearing. So if he wants to try and fix it cheap, he's welcome to my crankshaft. I know Jeff uh, just showed him a supercharged one from Walmart for $5,000. So I don't know. <laughs> I never knew oh, that's a good truck for Stan. Yeah, I know you buy full motors from Walmart. <laughs> they have a bunch of them. If he's looking to fix it cheap, though, I got a good crank that doesn't have a spun bearing. He's welcome yeah. to it. And it's out of the motor. So uh, just, just info. Um, the incident breakdown is, I mean, that's self-explanatory, I would assume. And uh, other than that, we were working on the ladder this week. We, we put uh, some mounts there, hold all the fittings and things like that to organize it. We finished putting the, uh, there's some seam lights, portable seam lights that we hooked up the battery chargers to. And so we're gonna do a lot more work with that. Also, we had, uh, there's a rumor that the ISO might be coming around here pretty soon. Isn't it too soon for this? No, it's been, I think, six years. Not a while. Said five years. So uh, we're, uh, we're probably going to have a meeting on Friday morning, maybe Thursday. Make sure we're Most buttoned down for that. Through the paperwork yeah. already. So uh, there's a lot of things you have to update. I mean, like we've been doing a lot more training, so that, that should help a lot. We've got you know, more equipment than we had last time. The way you had updated before, like the, the new ladder, engine four was added and things like that. If we get um, the new station done and get the training stuff over there, that ought to be a big plus. We hope. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're working on that. And then the state is going to virtually come inspect our stuff in May. It's an annual thing. They come out and you know, usually they come out and physically do it, but since COVID, they we have to go out with the tablet and show them the truck and <laughs> so uh, you know you get some good pictures and hold them up in front of that tablet. You <laughs> so uh, typically we have a binder where it's we got all the yeah, stuff I that we're required. So it shouldn't be a big deal, but sometimes they'll pick on one thing and it's like two years ago it was you have to have a 60 cc syringe. Why? I mean, I've never used a 60cc syringe for anything. I mean, other than to fill my you know, <laughs> shocks on my motorcycle. Yeah. But, uh, it's uh, so we got Dave in the show here. I have any 60cc syringe. Yeah. Do you need one? No, I have. Okay. I got, I got several. This is just a matter of you know, okay, that was on their list that we had missed. Apparently, but obviously they check for. 
the expired dates. I mean, even plastic expires nowadays, everything expires. So uh, that's not a way of making more money, but it's, you know, like, you know, masks expire. You yeah. think they would last 10 years, but no, it's like six months. Yeah. yeah. Did we you see where the, the today on the news, the bulletproof vest that some of the police departments are using because they technically expire at some point in time? They're going to send them over to uh, Ukraine. The Ukraine, yeah, because they're, they're still good, you know. Well, it's just like our fire gear. Fire gear uh, after ten years, you're supposed to replace it. Yeah. Well, most of our fire gear, is, you know, very good shape. Yeah. But we're an NFPA. Got to change it. So what happens is, and I, I mean, that's. We've had the last that we got from Bulgaria. We don't have anywhere near enough money to buy all the people in a year. So we're going to put in for a grant, but you know, basically you set yourself up if someone got hurt in a fire because their you know, gear got was technically hurt. expired. Yeah. You know, and you, you face some trouble for that. And we do send it, some of them out, not all of them have gone out yet, but for servicing and cleaning and whatnot. We, of course, we have the extractor there and whatnot to clean. But, it's just, uh, you know, like I talked before, we did everything we were required, we were supposed to do it, and we need twice as much money, if not more than that. So that's all I have. I have a question, real yes. quick. Just, and maybe you guys talked about this last month and I wasn't here, but the uh, grant that you, were, that you and uh, Stacy and Jeff and them were working on for an ambulance, what did- I what think did, that comes out next month. They, they postponed it. Um, right. <laughs> Okay. We, we don't think we're going to get that because it says less than 10% of the money was going to be for any. Um, we doubt that. But, you know, you won't get it if you don't ask for it. Right. Okay. But obviously, if we got it, we put it to you. Kevin, I might have missed this. Did, you, uh, did we talk about hiring Sean? No, I'm not. I got to do some more. Okay. okay. Anything else? Any public comment, Marie? <laughs> um, I have a question. Oh, my dog's license is two, 2022. Does that mean it's good for the whole year? It's good for the whole rest of this year. Cool. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, maybe you should do another year. Same product. Can you do multiple years? Yeah. Yeah. You, do multiple years? you can do multiple years as long as the vaccination goes out there. Yeah, yeah, I think we least, did that the first yeah, time. Yeah, it was a two Part or three year, year license year that you're looking for. Yeah. It was a two or three year license. We did it. Okay, there's nothing else. A motion to adjourn is in order. A motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Any other questions or comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Thanks. Aye. Not too bad. <laughs> Less than three hours. Oh.